Okay, I think I'm ready to gut this thing. I had to catch up on some other things. Once I, as always, once I open some of these games up and I see what I'm in for, I'm like, okay, that's fine. I could deal with that, but not, not right now. So, um, you know, with that being the case, I've gotten some other stuff out of the way and a little bit of breathing room. I'm gonna, I think for this one, I'm just gonna tear it down. Sometimes I restore as I go. Sometimes I just gut them and deal with the parts and pieces. Uh, this thing, it's not a whole lot of good here. So restoring as I go, it's probably not quite as practical as just gutting it, throwing away everything that I don't need, salvaging what I do, recondition that, then transfer that to what will be, you know, of course, the new play field, the new cabinet. Um, so that's probably the best way to go about it. Not a whole lot to say about it otherwise. So I'm just going to start gutting it. All right, made it this far on the tear down before I had to stop and just say, okay, it's too much stuff going on here. Let me fix some of it. And so I don't get overwhelmed on the backside. What's a little bit more, I don't know, I won't say troublesome, but intimidating when it comes to a Star Trek Next Generation are the subway system, the, the entire system, not just any one part of it, but these three are part of that system plus the large plastic trough underneath. And this is kind of like, where most trouble is found on this game as far as reliability goes or just if it's not playing right, it's not doing what it's supposed to, it's usually something going on within that subway system. They're trying to do a lot under there. They're trying to hold a certain amount of balls, keep the ball count correct, know where each ball is, and then that knows when to pop something out of, uh, you know, maybe the cannon loader or pop something out of the trough and it can get confused if just one of these optos just one wire just one opto isn't right now all of a sudden it's ball count issues it's doing things it's not supposed to do it's not starting modes it should start it's not loading the cannon when it should load and all those things so i wouldn't take for granted that any of this stuff is good and working it might all be but but to me just going to replace it all uh, as far as the optos go because I don't want to find out later. That can be a big pain in the ass to dig some of the stuff back out later and try to, to deal with it after you've restored the game and you're troubleshooting it uh, during the playtest portion of the restoration. So I'm just going to do one first. I'm going to do the most complex one. This one's got four optos. The other two only have two optos. So they hold the same amount of balls, and this one holds a few more, or counts a few more. And this is actually the roughest one. It's got the homemade bracket, the ground down plunger. Um, you know, it's missing its its light shielding, and it's just you know, it's just it's rough. So I'm gonna break this down. I'm probably gonna reuse this original harness. I don't see anything wrong with it can make a harness for it to have all the color correct wire, but it's it's a lot of work for no real gain if there's nothing wrong with this harness. And usually I would build a harness like this if I wanted to extend it or if there was problems, but I don't really need to extend this. You actually wanna keep these kind of small and tight because there's not a lot of room under there and there's no issues with it. So I'm just wasting my time doing that and my materials. So I'll take this all apart. I uh, will see what's involved in doing that. And we'll start cleaning stuff and just whatever, whatever we gotta do. Hopefully, I'll find uh, uh, the correct coil bracket around here. I'll probably replace the coil wires, but not the opto wires. And this thing is, the sleeve is like frozen in the coil. Spring is correct, that's good. Plunger's no good, I'm gonna change that. So this is the broken, um, this is a broken coil retainer. So it's, we'll definitely wanna find one of those. Let's break these down. All right, here are the three Feeder assemblies rebuilt, made an insulator for the one that was missing, correct coil retaining bracket, new plunger there, all new optos. 
and uh, these should be good reliable assemblies. So this is like the trash that comes out of here. This is, uh, it doesn't look like much. I'm gonna say that a pair of optos like this is, I'm gonna say they're $7 for a pair like that. Just $56 roughly in, in just optos. And this game used a lot of optos, so. Yeah, and then you get in each coil, let's say each one's $15, there's $45 there. Plunger, let's say it's $5, that's 50. So, I mean, you know, this is like $120 worth of parts just right here, just right here, just to do that. So this is why it's kind of expensive, you know, if you're really gonna be thorough. Do you need to do all that? Well, if it's your own game and it's in your house and you're gonna maintain it and you're just piddling around, well, no, nah, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But if you're trying to build somebody a nice, reliable game that you're gonna send them and hope they don't have any issues with it, then yeah, I mean, you probably need to catch some of this stuff. So that's what's done. So I'm gonna clean this table off and then we're gonna tackle the subway assembly. I'll probably show that more than I did this because uh, this is really just coils and, and brackets and optos, but I think the subway's a little bit more specific, a little bit more important, and we'll go over that as I do it. Here's the trough. This thing is, it's a massive piece of hardware for what it is. I mean, it's a under play field ball traveling system. But for, for that purpose, this is pretty intricate, um, at least for its time. And, and it's a big problem to deal with if you don't address it outside of the game. You don't want to be in, you're not going to really effectively deal with this in the game. It's going to need to come out. It's not easy to take off. Certainly not easy to put back on if the play field is fully populated. So with that in mind, I want to definitely rebuild every bit of this right here, right now, while it's in front of me and just know it's good. And... When I look at this one in general, I'll go over it in total first and then, then we'll get into the, the condition of it. So it's got two diverters that are powered by these two solenoids. Uh, they're two different style arms, they're not identical. It's got three sets of optos, numerous brackets, one, two, three, four, five, six brackets just th that I can see right here and there's a couple more on the other side we'll go over. It's got a stainless steel floor, I'll call it, so it's lined with stainless steel at the bottom, or a good portion of it anyway, less maybe a little bit of it up here. And uh, it's got its own dedicated wiring harness, so that's good, I don't have to make one unless there's an issue and I don't see any issues. If you look at it from this side, you're gonna see it's got two covers and two additional brackets. So it's, I mean, this is, there's a lot going on here. This isn't a, a small piece of hardware. Um, what I'm gonna do is just gut it, tear it all down. I've got pictures of it and I'll go through it and I'll replace the optos. I'll clean all the brackets. I'll try to regrain that stainless steel floor to where it looks nice. You don't see all this dirt that's ground into it. And uh, I'll also replace the actual plastic part because this one is broken in several spots. It's broken right here. You can see that. Hopefully that's showing there. And it's cracked in other spots. And, you know, all these screws are rusty and corroded. So let's see what it takes to take one of these apart. So 11, 30 seconds, right? Or a nine millimeter. Pretty common that this will be frozen in here and heat it up. Give it some leverage. Of course, I don't want to touch it now. And there we go. So that's definitely the only thing that's holding it on. Let me just 
Maybe if I pop this cover off here, I can reach in there and pull it out. that out of here if you see closely you'll see like all this gunk and I don't know what that is it's almost like locked tight or some kind of a assembly paste and it really after all the years it gets really frozen in there okay no that wasn't as smooth as I would like it to have been that's fine that's how it goes. all right Let's see, I'll go ahead and cut this away. Get this off of here. This thing's hanging on by like a thread. If it was working at all, I'd be surprised. But if not, it wasn't gonna work much longer. Like this. I'll go ahead and thread these back in to the diverter. So we got kind of like the harness and the bracket. I'm gonna wash this as an assembly and then I'll swap out the optos so it doesn't get too confusing or mangled. So we got that, we'll wash that as an assembly. I'm gonna wash this also as an assembly and kind of go through this and I'll break it down further after I clean it, but I know I'm gonna replace both these coils and I know I want to get down in this diverter shaft with a like a wire brush and really clean that out. And I want to do the same thing with that. Um, so we'll do that. This. Let's see what's left. I'm going to get the stainless steel floor out of here. One or two more. Use here. So there we go, right? Here's, here's what we're gonna actually need to replace. And uh, again, it's broken, it's pretty rough. And then we're gonna, everything else we're gonna have to recondition and rebuild. So these would be the components of it, broken down. Let me see if I got the new one over here. Let me grab that, all right, here's the new one. So that's good, we got that. Put it over here, just mirror it real quick. Make sure it's fairly accurate. I know it's gonna be a little bit thicker. That can be helpful and it can also be problematic. When it's thicker and where it's usually most problematic on these replacement ramps is right here, where they have these cutouts for like a, a diverter to flap in and out of. Uh, you see this like on a Twilight Zone replacement ramp on, um, Adam's family a lot of times it'll drag right across the edge and it'll kind of bind so you got to watch out for that this one seems to be cut fairly straight but they just never quite as precise or as accurate it seems as as the original so if I look at these two side by side I'll try to show this best I can but I can already see that there's, this is thinner, like this is more narrow than this. This looks thicker to me, like this looks taller. So I may wind up meaning to grind this down because that might allow for that diverter to drag right here. And hopefully I'm showing that pretty good. We'll get into it when we're ready to build it. But I might just preemptively, the reason I mention is I may just preemptively shave that down because I don't want to have that issue. That is a very frustrating issue. 
And other than that, it looks like this one might be cut back a little bit further. You can see where this one stops. I'm, you can see the width of my thumb in between this tab and the cutout. And if I put this right here, my thumb's clearly over that. So this is cut further back, which shouldn't make any difference. Um, it's better if it's a little bit too big than if it's not big enough because when it's not big enough, then you're gonna have to worry about it really binding. So we'll see, but just to kind of give you a side-by-side -side comparison, like, okay, yeah, I got this new part, but uh, it's not gonna be a walk in the park. All right, let's see. Let me, let me clean some of this stuff and we'll come back on the clean pieces and we'll try to assemble this. All right, so here are all the parts laid out. I've cleaned some things, I've polished some things, I've started assembling a few things. So. I grained this stainless steel floor, put it inside of the new uh, plastic trough, and at this point, I'm mostly gonna start assembling it. This is the diverter assembly. I have two new coils on that. Of course, they're gonna have new sleeves, so that's ready to go. I cleaned and polished these brackets that go on there, and any of the parts that I need to reuse are cleaned. The next thing I'm going to do is start replacing each opto one at a time. I don't want to just cut them free and and go that way with it because sometimes they get turned kind of funny. Like, you know, next thing you know, you got this going this way and that going that way. So I'm just going to lay it out. I'm going to take one opto off, solder the new one in, and then I'll take the next one off, solder it in, and then I'll, I'll do that until I've went through this whole chain uh, right here through this whole harness. Then I'll assemble it and I'll place that along with the brackets. All right, so let's let's get into that. Let's see. Let's start right here. This seems like the one that's either the closest or the furthest away. You don't want to jumble this up. If you jumble this up, uh, it, well, if you jumble it up and you realize you jumble it up, it's not that big of a deal. You'll figure it out. But if you jumble it up and then you don't know you jumbled it up, you'll try to figure out why this thing is acting so crazy. So that's why it's best when you have something like this just to do it one, one thing at a time. See here. C is going to be gray. If you look at these optos, they'll have like a C and an E. Sometimes it'll make more sense than others, but C is gray. I don't have the. It's in my favorite solder iron. I've got several of them, but this is kind of like my mobile unit, so. Sometimes it's it's not as fast as I, I've got a real narrow tip on this one. I, I got other tips I could change it to, but we'll see how we do with this. If it if it becomes problematic, I'll change. I like to have a nice solid bead of solder all the way into the wire because so often these will be frayed and real fragile and they'll just break right off. All right, so we got that in good order. I'll put this one on. I think it was coming from this direction. That's what it looks like. On this one, the A is gray and the K is black. That's a little bit easier to remember for whatever reason. A, gray, K, black. At least that letter is represented in each word. I always have some really strange 
way of remembering things. I don't think it's very conventional, but it works for me. You'll see, I just kind of pulse this cordless I don't like really drive it in and then I'll I'll wiggle it and I can see like this one's still a little bit loose so then I'll just pulse it again I'll wiggle it and it's nice and tight because like I said I mean cordless tools are really good it's no problem I, I recommend using them I can get a lot done with them but you got to realize what you're working with when you're dealing with plastic even on a low torque setting you don't want to strip things out all right one opto pair replaced Got two more to go. I won't bore you with that, but once I get these done, I'll do these two, and then we'll pick it up from there, and we'll start getting into what it takes to assemble this thing. Okay, I do have the opto pairs soldered in place. That's three more down. I actually looked these up. They're $9 a set, so probably going to have $200 in just optos. All right, let's, let's put this together. Uh, I have pictures if I need them, but I'm going to try to do it uh, without any. So let's see what's involved in that. Let me walk back over here and make sure I put this. Yeah, I think I think you're gonna see that pretty good. I hope. All right. First thing I want to put on is this diverter mech. I already have the stainless steel portion in place. Got some, got some looms left over, and I'm not sure that they don't go on here. But for right now, let me just I can I can deal with that. But for right now, let me just put this roughly together for a minute, and then I'll double check some stuff. Now this is where it always gets interesting. I mean, this could could go a lot of ways. First thing I'm gonna look for when I'm trying to place this will be the holes. So there's an opto hole there, there's an opto hole there, and there's an opto hole here. So all these optos are gonna be going pretty much this way. And of course, we've got the leads for the coils so we know it goes kind of this way roughly. Now these brackets are gonna have different widths, so some of them are gonna fit in spots that others wouldn't. So I'm just I'm just guessing right now. I'm not I'm not sure. This could be wrong. But this is how you get things in place. Even if you're wiring an entire play field, you kind of rough it in place. You use a little common sense. You might find out, oh, well, this needs to turn this way. You need to turn that 180 degrees and this and this and, you know, but you just kind of rough it in place and get an idea. All right, here's the trough built, subway, whatever you want to call it. What an undertaking. I mean, it's all day. It's 8 o'clock at night, and I started at like 8 o'clock this morning. Now, I'm not going to lie. I, I probably took a nap. I worked out. I had some lunch, uh, dinner. But you know, I would say this really represents, if I was going to put a, a true time stamp on this, probably six, eight hours worth of work, you know, in all fairness. And that's just to build two cannons and a trough. I mean, come on. And this game's loaded with that stuff. And, and before this, I've already prepped and primed and, and straightened a, a new cabinet and, and cleared a new play field. And I got sand and buff that. So, you know, if you don't see the value in this work, you don't understand what's involved in it. It's very slow, it's very time consuming, and it's very tedious. So with that said, this should be a good reliable part. I should have a lot of faith in this when I put it in there. It's not to say it couldn't have a single problem, but it would be pretty unlikely. The optos are new, the coils are new, everything's neatly wired. I've scrutinized everything, I've been through everything, and 
I have a lot of confidence in it. So that's pretty much it for the under portion, the subway portion of Star Trek Next Generation. Uh, if you can get these parts that I've shown you, the feeders and the trough, the subway under there in order, you're probably gonna have a pretty reliable game for the most part. There's some other stuff we'll go over, but this is kind of like I said before, maybe the Achilles heel of the game. So we've ruled that out.